So welcome uh, to this week's uh, Durham Geometry and Topology seminar. So it's a pleasure to have Luna Lomonaco from IMPA. Actually, Luna just recently won the prize for of the Union of Mathematical Union of the of Latin America and the Caribbean, right? So she was the first woman to get the prize. So it's a, it's a pleasure to have you in the seminar. So uh, she will talk about uh, mating quadratic maps with the modular group. Thank you very much, Fernando. It is a pleasure to be um, uh, remotely in Durham, or whatever you say in English, actually. Um, I'll talk to you about um, work that I am doing with uh, Sean Bullet. Uh, since the last uh, 10 years, uh, we started uh, working on this that, well, Sean started working on this 30 years ago, and I started working on this in July, in June, 2011. So it's a long story uh, and I'll try to um, tell you about the problem and tell you about the solution of the problem. And the work is about making quadratic maps with the modular group. So we'll give a very brief introduction about quadratic maps on the Riemann sphere and the modular group about matings. Um, and then I will start the proving theorem. I guess we all know that if we start iterating a rational map on the Riemann sphere, this action gives a partition of the Riemann sphere into completely invariant sets, the Fatou set, where the family of iterates is a normal family, and the Julia set, which is the complement, where the dynamics is chaotic. If we have a polynomial uh, acting on the Riemann sphere, Infinity is fixed and super attracting if the polynomial has degree greater or equal to, and hence has a basing of attraction, uh, which is the set of points attracting eventually by it. And we can define the field Julia set, which we write as KT, as the complement of the basing of attraction on infinity. This is the set of points with bounded orbits. And the Julia set is the um, Frontera is the border, uh, the border of the field Julia set. Uh, in the case of quadratic polynomials, so we can write a quadratic polynomial in the form zeta square plus c. And uh, here I drew some field Julia set uh, for the map zeta square, for the map zeta square plus one quarter, and for the map zeta square plus one quarter plus epsilon. And here there are some other ones. And uh, some field and Julia set are going to be connected, some not, and the Mandelbrot set, it's this set, is the set of parameters C for which the field Julia set KTC is connected. So this guy lives here, and this guy lives outside, more or less here. Leaving the world of rational maps and entering the world of um, planning groups. What is a Kleinian group? A Kleinian group is a discrete subgroup of PS cell to C. So we have a bench of Möbius transformations acting on the Riemann sphere, and we start to compose them in all possible ways, and we see what happens. And what happens? Uh, the action of the group is actually also going to give a partition of the Riemann sphere into two completely invari invariant sets. One is called the ordinary set, which is uh, the domain of normality for the group. And the other one is the limit set, which is the complementary. And uh, we are particularly interested in the modular group, which is a climbing group generated by these two maps, uh, tau one of zeta, which is zeta plus one, and tau two of zeta, which is zeta over one over zeta. And uh, here, in this picture, there is the tessellation of the modular group on the upper half plane. Um, the group acts on the Riemann sphere, but uh, uh, it's going to be the same what happens upstairs and downstairs, and then we just picture what happens upstairs. Uh, the limit set is the real line, and this is the tessellation of the upper half plane. Um, the picture is uh, taken by, from Wikipedia. And uh, these two words of rational maps and the climbing groups are not so different. And actually Sullivan started realizing this in the beginning of the 80s. 
uh, but I gave you the definition of uh, a FATU set for rational map, which is a domain of normality for the family of iterates. While in cl for claiming groups, the ordinary set is uh, the domain of normality for the action of the group. Similarly, uh, for rational map, the complement of the FATU set is the Julia set, where the dynamics is messy. And for Kleinian groups, the complement of the ordinary set is the limit set, where the dynamic is messy. And uh, these are just uh, the first entry or what is called the uh, Sullivan Dictionary, which continues uh, and um, Sullivan proves uh, um, no wandering for two theorem, uh, um, getting inspiration for the, uh, from the uh, argument of Alford Spinney's uh, theorem. So, there are a lot of similarities, but for the sake of this talk, we stop here. And these words are indeed not that different. They are so similar that there exists actually an object that can behave like a rational map or as a group, a climbing group. And this object is not going to be a map nor a group uh, is going to be something more general and it's called a holomorphic correspondence. What is a holomorphic correspondence? A holomorphic correspondence on the Riemann sphere is a multi-valued map. Uh, so a map such that each point has more images and it has several pre-images like normal maps. And is defined, being holomorphic, is going to be defined by the zero of the polynomial relation in degree n on zeta and w on w, my correspondence will have n pre-images and m images at each point. Let's make a draw. So we take in in, for the sake of this talk, we are just interested in correspondences to two. Each point of the Riemann sphere has two pre-images and two images. And uh, they are defined by the zero of a uh, polynomial of degree two in zeta and two in w. So we take a polynomial which has degree two in zeta and two in w, and we take the zeros. This is going to be a Riemann surface in C2 that we called S. This is S. And then uh, we take the projection on the Riemann sphere where the zeta lives. And the projection on the Riemann sphere where W lives. And the correspondence is the correspondence between this Riemann sphere and this other one. So each point here, for each point here, when we go back up, for each zeta, there are two w that are going to kill our polynomial, right? And these are going to be my images. On the other hand, for each w, I have two zeta that kill my polynomial. And these are my pre-images. So each point has two pre-images and each point has two images. And we are going to iterate this object. It's going to be a mess. Um, but it's also gonna be fun, I, I promise. But why am I speaking about this, this messy object? Because as I say, if we have a rational map, as f of z is equal p over q, then we can write it as a correspondence. We take as a polynomial p zeta w, w q of zeta minus p of zeta. Each zeta has one image w, each w has n pre-images zeta. And this is a correspondence n to one. 
pretty trivial correspondence, but still it's a correspondence. If we have a Kleinian group with the generators, the gamma j, j uh, written a j z plus b j over c j z plus b j, we can write it also as a correspondence, taking as polynomial well the product of w c j zeta plus b j minus a j zeta plus b j. So we can write both a polynomial and uh, uh, a rational map as a correspondence. Question, can a correspondence behave both as a map and a group at the same time? At the same time, it can be a map, it can be a group, it can be both. And why are we asking this? Well, because in the 90s, I was in kindergarten, but Sean Bullet and Chris Penrose started investigating this question. How? Well, they, um, they saw pictures. They started computing the limit set for a particular family of correspondence, uh, and they started seeing this picture. And well, I mean, looking at this picture, it seems to have two copies of a field Julia set of a quadratic polynomial and around wrapped the tessellation of the modular group on, on the upper half plane, right? I mean, this seems two copies of this guy with these things wrapped around. Imagine this goes here, and then we wrap around. This is what it looks like. So they started wondering, can a correspondence behave as a map and a group at the same time? In uh, um, mathematical terms, you say, can we make a map and a group into a correspondence. So what is a mating? Well, a mating between two objects, A and B, very roughly speaking, is an object C that behaves like A on an invariant subset of the domain and like B on the complement. A mating exists in the world of rational maps and in the world of Kleinian groups. Uh, you can mate quadratic polynomials into rational maps. And there has been a big industry of people doing this. And uh, in the web page of Arnaud Cherita, there are very nice videos about uh, the mating, uh, animation of uh, mating of quadratic polynomials into a rational map. And the matings exist in the world of Kleinian groups. They actually started there. But here we are interested with the following question. Can we make a rational map on an invariant component of its fatu set, let's say the interior of its field real set, and a Kleinian group on an invariant component of its ordinary set? So let's say this piece. Now, the first question to answer is, uh, uh, fine, do rational maps and uh, Kleinian groups fit together? In the sense that, I mean, if I want to wrap the, these things around the two copies of this guy, I mean, this guy better has to behave on the boundary here as the, this guy behaves on the boundary here. In other cases, it's a bit difficult to glue things together, right? So this is the first question to answer. And will they fit together in some object? Well, I already spoiled this question. In the case, uh, it will be a correspondence because it's the object that can behave like both. Um, and if both these questions are going answered positively, then you start wondering, well, would my object C being a mating? And if we have a family of these objects, Will we have a family of mating organizing in the same way as our rational maps organize and blah, 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 blah. 
But let's start from the first question. Uh, is this guy, can this guy fit together with this guy? Well, if you have a polynomial, a quadratic polynomial, zeta squared plus c, in a neighborhood of infinity, the c terms uh, is not really important. And actually, you can conjugate the dynamics of a quadratic polynomial next to infinity through the map zeta squared. And if your field Julia set is connected, you can extend this conjugacy to the whole basing of attraction of infinity. So actually, here outside, on this great part, my polynomial is conjugate to the map zeta goes to zeta squared. And uh, you, uh, you can prove that if your polynomial is, has a Julia set which is locally connected, you can extend uh, this conjugacy till the boundary. So on the Julia set, which I try, which is this part, okay, I stopped here because I'm terrible at doing it, uh, but uh, your map is semi-conjugate to zeta goes to to zeta. Uh, so the question is, uh, um, is the modular group going to behave like this map on the real line? And yes, this is what Sean and Chris figure out in uh, the early 90s. There exists a map, which is the Minkowski map, which is a homeomorphism um, between, uh, which sends a uh, real number written in continuous fraction expansion to his binary um, to a, a, a real number between 0 1 written in binary and if uh, she, uh, x is written like x0 plus 1 over x1 plus 1 over blah blah, blah uh, your image by the Minkowski map will be 0 x not the time of one, x one times of not, x two times of one, and blah, blah, blah. And why am I telling you this? Because this map is the map we need, because it conjugates the action of the generators of the modular group on the negative real line with the map zeta goes to two zeta. Yeah, on the negative real line with the map zeta goes to zeta divided by two. It's more complicated than this. There are actually six commutative uh, diagram, uh, but let's keep it the first approximation. Um, it's more complicated because uh, these are not invariant uh, under the, the generator of the modular group, the, 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 the negative and the positive real line, but it doesn't matter. Um, but knowing this, uh, what does this tell us? That if, that here, we could fit the field Julia set of a quadratic polynomial, because the dynamics is zeta goes to two zeta on the boundary. And here, we could, uh, so let's put here C, C. And on the other side, we could fit the field Julia set of the inverse of a quadratic polynomial. And wrap the upper half plane around it. So what's happening here? You have the two copies of your favorite field Julia set here and here. You attach them uh, on the beta fixed point and you wrap around it infinity, like view and view. The, the, the real line. This goes here is zero. That goes here. And here view goes minus infinity. And here view plus infinity. And here 
you get all the new. What am I saying here? I'm saying that uh, uh, quadratic maps and Kleinian groups fit together. If you want, you can glue them. And this is what Sean and uh, Chris proved in 94. And they also proved that uh, the matings between quadratic maps and the modular groups lie in this family of correspondences. And uh, this limit set that I showed you before is a member of this family. They uh, constructed this fam, they computed this family by looking how the modular group will be as a correspondence on the Riemann sphere. Uh, the modular group would satisfy some equations. Then for analytic continuation, the correspondence, which is modular group uh, in some open uh, invariant uh, subset of the domain, will have to satisfy the same equation. And they made computation and they figure out that this will be the um, analytic uh, expression. I can explain how they figure out uh, this, but I prefer to explain you how actually the dynamics of this guy is uh, and uh, um, show you that actually, yes, this is a family of matings. Uh, but if somebody wants to know how they figured out uh, this expression, I can explain it after the talk, okay? And they don't prove that just this, that uh, matings, uh, if they exist, uh, they belong here. But they also proved that, that for everybody in, uh, with the parameter in, the re in this interval in the real line, uh, in the, the correspondence is conjugate to the modular group on an invariant open set. So this thing outside that it looks like the tessellation of the modular group is actually conjugated to the tessellation of the modular group. They didn't manage to prove that uh, here you have a quadratic uh, uh, polynomial and here you have the inverse. So let me tell you how um, these correspondences behave. Is there any question so far? Okay. So, um, this in red, this line is the imaginary axis. This is zero. And uh, uh, the right half plane, uh, if we restrict our correspondence to the right half plane, our correspondence sends the right half plane inside itself as a one to two map. So the imaginary axis as an image here and another image here. So all these parts is a sense to this part. On the other hand, there is uh, the, co um, the correspondence that sends this, the right, uh, the left half plane. Uh, okay. The correspondence uh, is conjugate to its inverse by the map theta goes to minus theta between here and here. Why? Because uh, when they constructed it, they figured out that then the modular group will be something similar. And uh, actually, you can decompose your correspondence as uh, a delete covering correspondence composed to an involution. So uh, you, your correspondence sends the left half plane inside itself, one to two. 
and uh, it sends it has pretty much of the right health plane here inside one to two which means that the correspondence uh, restricted here on this part behaves ah just this part behaves as a two to one map it sends this line to this line and this line again to this line so this thing inside two to one to everything here outside by construction this is going to be a parabolic fixed point well uh, you you can make a computation this thing is a parabolic fixed point which has pretty much itself and this point as this line is sent to pass all the imaginary axis and this line this is the pretty much of the fixed point this is fixed it sends to all of this so our correspondence restricted to this mm, cardioid uh, shape uh, part behaves as a two to one map and uh, ah you can define the limit set uh, in the following way you can define here a backward limit set you take the intersection of all the pre-images of the left half plane and you can uh, define on this side the forward limit set by taking the intersection of the images of your correspondences on the, the right half plane Sorry, one one question. Just the 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 origin is has only one image. Uh, it it has just one image, and uh, on this side it has this image also. It has itself as an image and this point. Because heat is the pre-image. And this is the pre image, and uh, this is the image, and this is the other image. So you just call it fixed point because it also contains itself in, in, in the image. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. It's a fixed point for a branch. It's not uh, no. a fixed point uh, absolute in the sense that I mean, for the branch that fixes this side is a fixed point. Thank you Thanks. for the question. Sorry. Yeah, guys, I, I'm sorry. I told you that these guys are, are messy. I, I spent 10 years of my life to try to understand them. <laughs> I know that they are complicated. Um, but yeah, the, the other image is this one. As this line, it sends here and here. Okay, so... Um, this is the forward limit set, this is the backward limit set, and since uh, the involution conjugates uh, the correspondence here with the inverse of the correspondence here, the dynamics here is conjugated by zeta minus zeta to the dynamics of the inverse here. And uh, the connectedness locus for this family, this is the set of uh, parameters for which the limit set is connected is this object and we call them m gamma the modular Mandelberg set and here there are limit set for various guys here uh, this that i showed you before lives here this one lives here this one lives here this one lives here well and here there are others so looking at this picture one conjectures well Sean and Chris conjectures that this family contains mating between the model group and every quadratic polynomial with connected Julia set and not just this but the connectedness locus is homeomorphic to the Mandelbrot set and I didn't write it here, but when they write homeomorphic, they mean dynamically homeomorphic. If this point is sent to this point, then this is a mating between this guy and the modular group. This is what they want. 
because this is what it looks like. Look at the picture. Looks like Julia set moving in the Mandelbrot set basically uh, with the modular group outside. And uh, the conjecture was from 94, and uh, so far there has been uh, uh, kind of a lot of partial result, results. And they managed to prove uh, that uh, there exists some mating between the quadratic uh, polynomials and the modular group for a lot of quadratic polynomials. But they didn't manage to get all of them because for doing this, if you want to show that something is conjugate to a quadratic polynomial on the a limit set that you usually want to use a, some, a theory that is called the polynomial like mapping. Um, and I won't uh, explain in detail, but I will tell you that for applying the theory, uh, this picture is not good. You need to break the parabolic fixed point. So this join this the forward limit set and uh, the backward limit set, then you apply the theory and then you come back. And this is how they proved and this is how they proved uh, uh, these theorems. So for proving these theorems, they come to the, they look at the correspondence, they perturb the co correspondence, they apply a theory that is called polynomial -like mapping and they try to come back. Uh, you can do it, but uh, um, for everybody in the family, this one is a parabolic fixed point of multiplier one. So try to uh, prove a result uh, by perturbing every member of your family and then do something and then try to perturb back. Uh, it's not exactly the most optimal way you can think of. And this also suggests that maybe, maybe the description of these guys uh, uh, in terms of polynomial is not optimal. Maybe these guys are mating, but between quadratic maps with a parabolic fixed point and the modular group. And then you start wondering, do we have uh, a, a family of maps, uh, quadratic rational maps with a parabolic fixed point? Uh, yes, we do. Is the family per one one. The family per one one is the family of maps of the forms zeta plus one over zeta plus a with a complex number. For every a, infinity is fixed and parabolic. Um, hence, it has a basing of attraction of infinity, which is a parabolic basing basic basing but it's still a basing and then you can define a field julia set in the same fashion as for polynomial as the set of points that do not go to infinity just now infinity is parabolic instead of super attracting but it's the same definition and uh, here i picture the field julia set for some pa this is for a equals zero this is for a equal minus one, I guess, uh, he, he lives here. And this is the connectedness locus for the family. Actually, I'm lying because this is a modular space because uh, uh, PA is holomorphically conjugate from P minus A. And so here there are equivalence classes and not maps, but. Ah, another thing you can wonder, uh, do they fit with the modular group uh, on the boundary of the Julia set, and yes, because there I proved in my in my PhD thesis that uh, um, on the basing of attraction of infinity they are conformally conjugated to this map, and this map is topologically conjugate to zeta square on the circle. So the construction that Sean and Chris did are still valid if we use this map. And this is the connectedness locus, which is actually homeomorphic to the Mandelbrot set by a uh, result of um, Carson Peterson and Pascal Foch that is still manuscript. So at uh, the light of all of this, what did we do? Well, 
we change the um, model family. And we define a mating between a rational map of the form PA of zeta and the modular group to be a correspondence a FA holomorphic to two for which the two to one branch that fixes the backward limit set is invariant, um, is hybrid equivalent to PA on its field Julia set. And when it restricted to uh, the complement of the limit set, the map is conformally conjugate to the generator of the modular groups acting on the upper half plane. And finally, we managed pr to prove that for every, every A in the connecting in the modular model group set, the correspondence is a mating between a rational map of PA and the modular group. Before telling you the strategy of the proof, I want to show you an illustration of the theorem. This is the modular Mandelbrot set. This is M1, the parabolic Mandelbrot set. And this is the center of the main hyperbolic component. This is the center of the main hyperbolic component. And we proved that, that here, actually restricted to a double pinched neighborhood of this, you know basically on this part, my correspondence is hybrid equivalent to this map here around. And outside, we have the facilitation of the modular group. There is a map conjugating this, uh, sending this open set to the upper half plane and conjugating the, your correspondence here with the generator of the modular group. This guy is the center of period two, this is center of period two, and here around the correspondence is conjugated to this map. This is the center of period three, this is the center of period three, same story. Okay. What's the strategy of the proof? Well, for proving that here the map is conjugate uh, to a member of per one one, we glue outside this guy, the backward limit set, the basing of attraction of infinity by quasi conformal surgery. Um, for the second part, and I, I prepare to explain uh, this part. I will just give the main ideas, but I will. And for the second part, uh, we need to prove that the correspondence here is conjugated to the generator of the modular group. What do we do? Well, we use the Riemann map. We know that uh, for every A in the modular, group, uh, in the modular Mandelbrot set, um, the limit set is connected by definition of connectedness locus. So we can take the Riemann map from the complement to the upper half plane. And uh, we prove that this Riemann map conjugates uh, the generator of the modular group on the upper half plane to F acting on this open set. And uh, this map ends up playing the role of a butcher map in our theory. And we actually, um, well, we'll speak about this later. Um, let me get to the parameter plane theory, theorem. Um, we know, we proved that everybody here inside is conjugated with the guy here inside. So this induces a map between this guy and this guy. This map is well defined, is easy, it comes directly from the way we do the surgery. And uh, it's also easy to prove that it's injective. The punchline is the Rickman lemma. And we prove, uh, we prove, we finished the proving last year, we are writing up now that uh, 
the map chi between the modular Mandelbrot set and the parabolic Mandelbrot set is a homeomorphism, which is dynamical. A, and this is wrong, I'm sorry. It's, a, it's conformal, but it, um, it more or less extends. In, at every point, it extends uh, to a neighborhood, but it doesn't extend as a whole map um, to homeomorphism between pinched neighborhoods. But the map is homeomorphism, and it's dynamical between the modular Mandelbrot set and the parabolic Mandelbrot set, as in conformal on the interior. So, how do we prove the theorem? I told you before that we proved in my thesis that um, every member of pair one one, every PA of zeta uh, zeta equal um, a PA of zeta is zeta plus one over zeta plus a a complex uh, is conjugate on the basis of attraction of infinity to the map H of zeta, zeta squared plus one third over one plus uh, zeta squared over three. Uh, this is a Blaschke product, which has a parabolic fixed point at infinity with multiplicity three and basing of attraction, the unit disk, one basing and the complement of the unit disk, the other one. And what I proved is that uh, H on the complement of the field Julia set, it's conformally conjugated to a PA on the basis of attraction of infinity. Why am I telling you this? Um, because uh, what we are going uh, to do for proving the theorem is to glue this map H outside lambda minus by quasi conformal surgery. So what's the strategy? Well, constructing fundamental annuli about my backward limit set for the correspondence and a fundamental annuli about the closed unit disk for my map H and a quasi-conformal map between one annulus and the other. Once you have a quasi-conformal annual uh, map between fundamental annuli, it's not particularly difficult to turn uh, this guy into a member of, um, of pair one one. And then constructing a holomorphic motion in order to um, move this construction to all the member of the family FA. But there is a huge, huge problem starting with. And the problem is uh, um, my backward limit set makes casks. Here there is a casp. And for every A in the family here, we're going to have a casp. While here, in the outside of the unit disk, we, it's pretty smooth. We don't have casks. Okay. How um, I have four minutes. Okay. So, um, which is not really enough for giving the proof. Uh, so I will just uh, uh, say the um, important, uh, the course point, okay? Mm, we proved, and this took forever to prove, that the um, M gamma, the, the connectedness locus for the family, it's contained in what we call a lune. Well, uh, 
And this is not because I'm called the Luna, but because this is uh, super practical for our uh, purpose. And what's, a, what's this? A Luna is a rugby ball at uh, the um, topological disk enclosed by two half conferences. And uh, there is a Luna Q, uh, enclosing the modular maneuver set with some angle which makes some angle, which is strictly less than pi. And why this is important? Because this implies, well, this is uh, uh, connected at the um, a parameter plane, uh, dynamical plane similarities that we have also in this family that uh, if this is the case, uh, then there is uh, a dynamical loon enclosing the um, backward limit set for every member of the family living inside the loon. And this dynamical loon moves holomorphically with the parameter. And why I'm saying this? Because uh, then uh, we consider the pre-image of the loon and if this moves holomorphically, the pre-image also moves holomorphically Okay, if you don't hit the critical point, but we take the, the subset here where you don't hit the critical point so fast. And this gives us holomorphic motion of what we call the fundamental cross sum. And this is for spreading the surgery by, um, by holomorphic motion. And uh, About the surgery, I will just say one thing. Uh, we have this problem of cast and no cast. How do we solve this? And to solve this, we use, we construct what it will be an external map for this guy. We consider the Riemann map from the um, complement of the backward limit set to the complement of the limit disk. And then we consider the map G, which is uh, Riemann map minus one, F Riemann map. And why we do this? It, forgetting another map, no, but the point is that this map won't have a cusp. This is a way for basically straightening the cusp. And uh, in order to construct a quasi-conformal map between an annulus here and an annulus of H, we construct a quasi-conformal map between an annulus around this guy and an annulus around this guy. And then we move it back by the Riemann map here. And this is how you do the first step. And when you have the first step, then it's easy. I mean, you take the, the the standard com uh, the structure here, you pull it back here, you spread it by the dynamics and you integrate it. There are a couple of technicality, more than a couple, but um, you just have to be very careful and very patient uh, uh, and very, 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 very patient. We took an, an insane amount of, the, of, uh, of years of doing it. And yeah, I was uh, clearly too optimistic because I wrote all the proof, I'm sorry. Uh, let me conclude the saying that in order to prove that uh, the starting point that the connectedness locus is included in a yun with some angle, we needed to prove what is called the Yokus inequality for this family. And uh, we ended up developing a whole dynamical theory for this quadratic correspondence with, cor with par which parallels completely the uh, dynamical theory of quadratic polynomial. We have uh, a butcher map, like for the case of polynomial, just for the case of polynomial, the butcher map conjugates the action of the polynomial outside the field Julia set to the map zeta to the D. Here we have our butcher map that conjugates uh, the um, action of the correspondence outside the limit set to the action of the generators on the upper half plane. 
And uh, in the case of polynomials, you have external rays uh, that are super, super, super useful for doing an insane amount of things that are, um, you pull back uh, the uh, ray of um, constant argument by the vector map. In our case, uh, uh, well, on the after out plane, we have it, uh, we have uh, geodesics and we can pull those back by our butcher map. And these play the role of external rays as external, as periodic rays land, periodic geodesic land. As every repelling periodic point is the landing point of a periodic ray, every repelling periodic point is the landing point of a periodic geodesic. As there is a Yoko inequality for the Mandelbrot set, there is one for the modular Mandelbrot set. And it's even stronger. The thing is that they just uh, uh, work at the first level. And the, the fact that it's stronger means that uh, the ratio between the main cardio the main hyperbolic component and the components attached here is smaller than the ratio between the main component here and the component attached here. This is what it was written in the Yoko's inequality. But it just works for the first level. It doesn't work for the other one. But yeah. Um, and these guys at the end of the story are homeomorphic because if he is homeomorphic to the parabolic Mandelbrot set, who is homeomorphic to this guy, um, so actually they are homeomorphic. It's just that this is not the natural model for these guys. And this is everything I wanted to say. Thank you for your attention.